Welcome to Real Talk Real Women. My name is Miriam Kaladi and today we have Figure Universe Pro, fitness competitor, model and choreographer Bethany Nelson on the show. Welcome Bethany, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm fine, thank you so much for your time. Of course, thank you for having me. Uh, you're most welcome. Bethany, you have a background and uh, are self-trained in dance. How did you get interested in the fitness industry? It's funny you say that because I didn't really follow the fitness industry very much until um, right before 2011, I found out I had celiac disease. So I figured out that I really had to change my diet mainly. Um, and then I had a thriving passion to perform. So with that, I remember seeing in these magazines like Oxygen, had uh, featured performers that were doing some sort of dance routine. And that's where I just got really excited thinking, I think there's something out there that I could, um, you know, feel really good, look really fit, and be able to perform. I'd already auditioned for the, uh, like, professional NBA and NFL dance teams out here in Minnesota. And uh, never really had that look or that fitness uh, level, but I definitely had the, the talent and the drive to perform and entertain. So that's what got me into it. And when you left home after high school, you ballooned to 152 uh, two pounds on a five-foot frame. Was there a specific point in time where you made a con conscious decision to do something about it? The first phase for me was uh, about my mid-20s, right around like 23, 24. Um, I think I first came to terms with that my weight was kind of at, I was at my heaviest, and I didn't like seeing what I saw in the mirror, even though I really loved curves, and I loved women that had um, a body that they could feel proud of, and I always felt like, fairly confident in my clothes, um, but it, I think I was worried that if I was going to have children someday, that I was going to end up being um, like most mothers that feel like then the weight they couldn't get rid of after pregnancy. So I thought, man, if I've got some weight to lose now, I really would love, I want to have kids someday and I want to figure out how to really change my health so the weight can be easier to manage after kids. And then it was really in my later 20s when the fitness kind of competition scene happened and um, I decided to kind of give competing a try. And that's where my fitness and my shape really went kind of the next level. So. Right, right. And this, yeah. <laughs> and discovering that you had a severe gluten allergy also played a role in adopting your new lifestyle. How did yeah. that impact your health and life in general? Before I found out I had celiac, I had three years of severe chronic pain called fibromyalgia. So I struggled um, not being able to work out. I was very depressed. I actually felt like I was 80 years old inside, even though I looked on the outside like a pretty healthy 20-something. And I was miserable, but once I figured out it really was my diet and gluten really was pretty much attacking my body, I just really started to think and focus on what I was doing for the inside. Um, and then the outside kind of came with it as I started really paying attention to what gluten was doing to my body. Uh, it was tearing it down. I mean, my body really shut down for a long time. And then within a couple of weeks of removing gluten out of my diet, my life kind of came right back. I had that, that glow again. I had energy and focus. And that was just the beginning of it all. And within a couple of months later, I was on stage competing for the very first time and had a blast doing it. And then I never wanted to stop. I want to compete for, for a long time to come. You've also suffered from adrenal fatigue. What is that and how have you been dealing with it? It's interesting because I, when I had my years of fibromyalgia, I had chronic fatigue, uh, which is really is a lot of different symptoms of feeling like brain fog or you feel completely drained of all of your energy, just fatigue on a very extreme level, where the adrenal fatigue is something similar. And because I have celiac, I have an autoimmune disorder, so I'm susceptible to any type of fatigue like this. So uh, two years ago, I was in the midst of getting ready for a competition. I decided to be to power lift for a while, um, very similar to what a lot of CrossFitters are doing these days. And I absolutely loved it, but I was putting my body to a new physical extreme. I was putting a lot of stress on not only my body, but I was walking through your everyday um, stresses of just uh, living life and uh, I think I really tapped my body out to where 
it's as if you have an energy tank uh, to go through every day, uh, whether you're training really aggressively or just getting through a 12-hour day. And I seem to always now have an empty tank. And I kind of then work down into my fumes uh, where my goal is to uh, replenish and restore my adrenals, which is the stress gland where we hold our stress. And if my, my body went into fight or flight too much, and then I just kind of removed all of that special hormone that I don't get to have anymore. So now I'm on a treatment plan with really great supplements to help kind of re-coach um, my adrenals to get better. So. Oh, great. Great to hear that. Fast forward to 2011, when you entered your first competition and placed second, what motivated you to compete? I wanted to, to purely perform and entertain a crowd. So I... Um, learn how to do a couple one-arm push-ups. I watched YouTube videos and figured out some tricks that I could do and uh, really felt like I gave the audience a really fun routine to watch. Uh, and that was a, a great uh, starting point. The cool part about that first show was I, I was uh, encouraged by my nutrition coach to do figure as well. And it turned out I ended up winning the first place overall title with figure. And uh, that was just such a trip because I didn't know what I was really getting myself into and um, proved to myself and, and not only the wonderful friends I had coming out to watch that um, I was meant to be a part of the sport and it was just such a blast and then I wanted just to keep doing it. So it really helped me kind of find two, two divisions. I always like to say um, my love for fitness gave me my figure um, and there's a couple parallels to that. So it's really helped completely transform my body, but I absolutely love uh, competing in both of those divisions. You've mentioned before, since then you've competed and have been making a name for yourself, becoming both a figure and fitness pro in your second year of competing. What has been the biggest lesson you've learned through that process? It all depends on who arrives and who shows up at a competition as far as how the outcome really plays. I always tell people that no matter what, when you decide to face a challenge of like a competition and prep for, who knows, two to three months for a show, uh, that you have to have the mentality that you're going to win that title. Um, but the, the truth is, is, there's only one title for however many people show up. So then if everyone's going through that wonderful goal of winning, but knowing that no matter where you come up, you did your best, and that if it meant that you're getting third place with show because some really amazing people showed up and they took it, which was really exciting to be then next to them and to be a, a striving for that same end goal, which everyone would love to win, but only one person gets to win. So it's kind of, to me, a little bit of a life lesson is that I'm always, no matter what, going to be shooting to make it someday. It's going to take me a bunch of different ways around the corner with, uh, I might be dreaming for one thing over here, but it might bring me to another awesome dream that I didn't even know of. So um, I try to kind of think of it always kind of the uh, life is half full all the time. That's kind of how I look at it. And you've also been featured in major media outlets in the industry, and I know you enjoy public speaking as well. What drives you to wanting to share your story and positively impact others? Before I got found fitness and found competing, I went through a lot of um, inward work, a lot of searching that I did with uh, my past and even just relationships I had in my life. And a, a lot of relationships um, were defining me and I had to let go of them in order to become the person I am today. And that's what really excites me is that my this, this fitness career platform that kind of happened since I started competing and modeling that helped uh, create a platform for me to share my story, which is really helping women um, feel empowered to let go of things that are holding them back. A lot of uh, people reach out to professionals like myself and ask, you know, how did you make your transformation? What can I do in the gym? How should I eat? And I always say I will love to help you in all those areas, but where I really get passionate is helping them uh, dig deep a little bit on where their roadblocks are, where their insecurities are, how to kind of really build them up, build up their self-esteem to feel like they can do anything, um, because a lot of people don't don't believe they can. So to kind of be someone's cheerleader, uh, and if I can do that through motivational speaking by sharing my story with how I'm still facing a lot of struggles in my life, but I just keep forging ahead and know that I will end up on top someday, 
is kind of the, the dream uh, kind of cheer that I end up giving myself and I want to give to others all the time too. Thank you. And besides media coverage and speaking, you also work with a small group of clients. What has been the most surprising experience you've gone through in doing so? It's really cool. I feel like I've helped build a little bit of a sisterhood, a little bit of a small group community of women that I, through inspiring them to have any kind of a lifestyle similar to mine, help bring them in. And then now I've helped them really grow to love and support each other. So I feel like almost just like the facilitator of a really great encouragement team where they are inspiring each other now because their journeys and their stories with where they're at are more tangible to them than I am. So I kind of get them in and draw them in and then really help encourage them to help each other. And so when one uh, girl might be really dialed in for a month and is really reaching for her goals and is on a mission, the other women around there feel that and, and they get more excited and inspired by someone doing what's hard for them versus what I get to do now. You know, like people see a transformation before and after, um, but most people really get inspired by the short term process, like what can happen in the matter of four weeks. So. As much as my story might inspire people, um, it's really a matter of the relationships that I think I'm helping build that uh, is what's really motivating, I think, to others. So it's been it's incredibly even then inspiring to myself that when you have a story, how much it moves people, and then those people, you know, inspire me back, which is really cool. When you wrote me before the interview, you, de you explained how you quote-unquote detoxified your life through ending toxics, stressful relationships. How do negative people impact our, our lives and what can you do about it? I tend to use the word um, divorce a bit uh, for most people to understand my story. Um, you know, my, I'm very open with my story that right before I found out I had celiac, I had decided to really uh, break free from relationships that I had with both of my parents. Um, they happened to be um, just not in a good place for themselves and I um, realized that my health was more important, my own health and happiness to move forward and really have that separation. Um, it's just like a lot of adults have to figure out boundaries in their life. Um, you know, when you're a kid you really don't have a choice, but then when you start to grow up through your 20s and 30s, um, or if you're in, say, a marriage and then relationships change, um, if something's being harmful to you more than helpful to you, you have to kind of take a step back and look at it and decide um, what's really worth your, your end all goal of being in a better place. And for me, my body was really telling me that it was sick from stress and it wasn't going to get better until I removed stress out. And for me, those relationships were nothing but a re-trigger of just creating inflammation in my body. And um, I see it happening to people all the time, you know, whether they're stressed at work or they're stressed financially or in, or in relationships, that does havoc on the body. And if we don't think about how to take care of it now, we might get something five, ten years down the road. Uh, where that where, where cancer and all sorts of other harmful things come from that your body just can't handle it. And um, so I really try to encourage people the most I can with the relationship piece. It gets tricky because it's hard to let go. Or even for me, it was a matter of feeling like am I an awful person because I don't have that family to, you know, stay by my side. But the more... I let go, the more friends came into my life that became a beautiful family. And I feel like even the fitness followers that I that I get to have become that great support system, which has been great. I know you struggled quite a bit financially last year. See these experiences as fuel to stay motivated and strive for more. Tell me how you've been working your way out of this and how you've been able to stay positive and keep uh, pushing forward. I did have a very hard year last year. I was humbled quite a bit that I uh, managed to be most of the year without a, without a car to drive around and um, 
to this day when I see people out in the very cold Minnesota days, uh, it's it's hard to see them walking for the to wait for the bus or just walking to get groceries because I lived like that for a long time and had wonderful friends helping me out. Um, but I just always knew I, I would tell myself the struggle is temporary, and every day that I had to ride my bike, as, as active and strong as I am, my body was, was kind of dying inside, but my spirit, I had to keep strong and had to keep telling myself, I mean, I would seriously chant in my mind, um, you will have a car someday, you will have a car someday, and that was that sometimes the only thing that could keep me going and even keep my legs physically moving towards knowing that this, this struggle is just temporary and it's a part of my story for a reason because I feel like if that's my story and I want to be an open book someday, which I which I am right now, with really encouraging people, then then this story has a purpose. You know, the struggle um, is able to hopefully encourage people in that same place. Um, even just last week, I had a young woman outside my car ask for directions on how to get somewhere, and she was walking. And uh, we figured out it was just down the road, but I told her, I was get in my car. I want to take you there. And to be able to give that back um, is, is a tremendous gift. When you've been somewhere, you have that compassion because you understand what they must be going through. So for me, I'm just the same thing as far as financially. Uh, it, it might still be a struggle each month, but I just keep telling myself, if this isn't forever, I'm just going to keep working hard and it'll be different someday. And engaging in yoga and meditation and monthly massage work is also something you invest in, right? I started doing yoga back when I had fibromyalgia because it was kind of the only thing my body could get through. Um, massage therapy was a form of uh, treatment. I feel like it's still something that um, anyone even then actively that's a competitor or really aggressively training in the gym. Um, I call them cleansing boosts. It's kind of how I look at it along with, you know, your healthy diet and vitamins, um, but having proper, uh, you know, therapy, acupuncture, chiropractic, all those things that are investments, but they're going to get your body into that fine-tuned, happy, toxic-free kind of place, and, and that's wholeheartedly what I love promoting because I've had to learn so much about that through all of my chronic pain and, and allergy issues. And where can people go to learn more about you or connect with you online? I have a great website, uh, teampeanutfitness.com. I also have uh, two fan pages on Facebook. One's Team Peanut Fitness, and the other one's just my name, Bethany Nelson, Figure Universe uh, Pro. And uh, Instagram is at Bethany J N Peanut. Awesome. Is there anything else you would like to talk about today that you feel we've missed? No, I think that sounds great. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much, Miriam. Thank you. And thank, yeah. you, and thank you so much for watching. My name is Miriam Kaladi. For more inspiration, check out our website at realtalkrealwomen.com.